Hey everyone, it's Aaron with Man Candy Creations, and if you're just joining Garage Fab, in the last episode, we cut off the front of my wife's truck. And now, now I don't know how to put it back together. See the last episode? No. Because you're my wife. Has it been up? It's been up. Should I go watch it? No. Last episode is the one where I cut your truck in half. And now I don't know how to put it back together. What? Maybe you don't know. Yes, you do. I don't. Why don't you know how to put it back together? Because it's different than it usually is. Are you serious? I am absolutely serious. In my time as a fabricator, I have performed the traditional frame Z on five different vehicles. All but one has been on the road for several years and tens of thousands of miles with no signs of failure. The last one was done a couple months ago and I don't even think it's registered yet. So that one doesn't count, but this one should not be a cause for concern, but it is. Why? Because I had to go and get creative. The typical frame Z generally goes something like this. The frame is cut and the front section is lifted a given amount and then welded back together. People often weld the small area where the front and rear sections of frame connect. On my first Z and every Z since, I wanted the first step to be much more secure. So what I did was added an eighth inch plate between the front and rear frame sections. This allows me to weld all the way around the front section and all the way around the rear frame section, already making this joint much more rigid. Then heavy duty fish plates are made and welded to both the inside and outside of the frame rail. Lastly, plates are made and welded to the bottom of the frame and the top of the frame to fully box in the side fish plates and you're done. Easy peasy. So what makes this truck any different? this. The front frame section has not only been moved up two inches, but also inwards two inches towards the center. This changes everything. Well, almost everything. I'm still going to use the plate design to join the front and the rear sections together, but the plate is going to have to be modified a little bit. And instead of an eighth inch, it's going to be a quarter inch thick. Now I can still weld all the way around both the front and rear sections and the quarter inch thick plate makes this structure still very rigid. The problem now is the side supports. My original fish plates are no longer going to work. I could just bend them in, but that's gonna get in the way of the steering. So I may only be able to add the plates to the inside of the frame rail, to the tops and to the bottoms. And honestly, I don't know if that's gonna be enough. I may have to wait until the inside, the tops, and the bottoms are done so that I can step back and look at it and decide if that's going to be strong enough. If not, I may have to get rid of the steering box and go with a power steering rack. So in reality, I'm going to figure this out, but this is the first time in a long time that I haven't known exactly what I needed to do. And I'm just hoping it's not gonna cost a lot more money. I think the best place to start here is step one. I'm going to cut the joint plates out of quarter inch steel, but before I do, I'd like to introduce you to my favorite tool. It gets more use here than any other tool because it's by far the most versatile. It saves time, it saves material, it's an energy saver and will likely pay for itself in the first use. What does the most versatile tool in the world cost? More than you can afford, pal. It's cardstock, actually. I get it for a dollar a sheet at the local upholstery store, but I literally use this on almost every project, whether it's fabric, sheet metal, steel plate, and even tubing. If you can't locate any, poster board from any office store would work fine, and you can get it in pink. I think I'm gonna do a whole video just on cardstock. Subscribe for that one. You'll thank me. Today, I'm using it to make templates. It's a little easier to cut and shape than steel, so I can make all the parts I need fine tune them, assemble them, and then cut them apart 
for templates. If you lightly score the cardstock, it'll allow you to make sharp bends. I'm gonna score and bend two sides just to help line it up with the square frame rails. Then tap the end with a soft hammer to emboss the cardstock with the shape of the end of the frame rail. Now I can cut around the shape and get a perfect template to cap the frame rail. Normally on a traditional Z, I would just extend the template vertically two inches to completely cover the ends of both sides of the frame. But on this truck, the frame is moving up and to the side. So I need to map out that movement on the cardstock. Two inches up, two inches over. The template is ready to go and it's time to turn these into steel. I'm gonna be cutting all the parts out today with a plasma cutter, but is it required? Absolutely not. It'll take a bit more time, but you can absolutely get this job done with a $20 grinder from Harbor Freight. How much more time? Let's find out. Perhaps you noticed I'm using a different template with a plasma cutter. In hindsight, it would have been more fair to include the making of that template in the race because it adds a few minutes to the plasma cutter time, but here's the thing. If you're making multiple parts, you only need to make that template once, and then the cutting process flies. The plasma template needs to be a bit smaller than the actual part because plasma cutters won't cut flush to the template. So you need to account for that. Ooh, I think I'll do a mini video on plasma cutting templates too. The joint plates are done and ready to be welded on, but before I get too crazy with the welding, I'm gonna set these in place and heavily tack weld them so that I can check the fitment of the wheels because if the wheels don't fit after the frame modifications that we've done, now is the time that I want to know, before I spend hours welding and fabricating fish plates, and then several more hours cutting it to fix it. I'm going to make similar joint plates for the front of the frame because when we Z the frame up two inches, we're also lifting the mounts for the front clip and we don't wanna do that. We want the front to be the same place it always was. So now we need to cut the frame to drop it back down two inches, back to where it was originally. Unfortunately, checking wheel fitment isn't going to be as easy as just bolting on a couple wheels. The new wheels are way bigger than the old ones, and because of the Z, they travel up inside the fender more too. So I've got to remove a whole bunch of sheet metal to make room. I'm doing a Texas chainsaw quality job here because none of these cuts are final. The engine compartment of this truck has been neglected and forgotten its entire life, so we're going to change that this time around. In future episodes, we'll be doing a complete engine bay overhaul with bead rolled firewall and inner fenders. But for now, my only focus is not removing too much material and creating more work for future me. This is an exciting moment for me. Finally getting to see these wheels fully tuck. And you know what? There's almost too much room. I don't like wheels that are inset too far. I prefer wheels that barely fit inside the fenders. But my wife isn't really experienced with bag vehicles just yet. So let's consider this training wheels. 
she does well and doesn't jack up these fenders, maybe then we can consider some small spacers and get these wheels to fit. Perfect. It's a good day guys and I am in a very good mood the Mighty Max is back together in one piece we still have a mini truck I still have a wife and we still have a project to continue on in a future episode the Z went fantastic I couldn't be happier you know I, I couldn't see what it was gonna look like before it was done I was concerned that there was going to be some weaknesses I just couldn't see it but now it's done I can see it, and I have zero concerns whatsoever that this Z is going to last forever. It's a good day, guys. Looking at the Z now, I can see that the frame never loses width at any point, and that was my big concern. The frame is two and a half inches wide, and it remains two and a half inches wide at all times. We have this strange section that juts out, but it's really not a big deal. I lied. I have one tiny concern. And that's this right here. If any crack were to form, this is the spot. Cracks love corners. So I need to eliminate that corner. So I'm gonna add a small series of gussets down at the bottom and the frame should be good forever and ever and ever. In the meantime, hit the subscribe button cause I just got some piston rings. Now I can finally finish assembling the 4G63. Until next time, keep moving forward. More than you can afford, pal. Really, babe? This is why we can't buy you nice things.